<laughs> what's what's your favorite like facet of the game? What's like what, what edifies you the most about playing ten? Like which, which bits that draws you to playing rugby the way you do? The defense, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Putting smoke and hits. It. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you say that though? You are, he dabbles. You are, he dabbles. Um, <laughs> the, the arms like the arms you've got on you. You make some bloody good old shots, son. I will tell you that for sure. Me and Rob still in the same gym programs. <laughs> bloody right. <laughs> bloody right. I don't know what I, what I like. I don't know. I like attacking. Obviously, it's, you know, I kind of create a game plan the whole week building up to the game and. Um, so I'm looking for certain moments whether it's an off or attacking inside or yeah. whether it's like throwing, up, throwing a good pass to put someone through a space I like that sort of stuff um, I like kind of things that challenge me whether it's like I say an off or a tough pass it's kind of right in the line I've got to make it like put it right in the money for it to come off or like small chips over the top so these things that are almost I suppose a bit riskier I like trying them in games and challenging myself to be able to execute these skills and put it right in the money for the boys well, so now Ryan is for the moment no longer with the boys. Can you give us a bit of insight into taking his kind of position as the uh, uh, ringleader with the banter, the, the chancellor of chat, if you will? I haven't, by the way, I haven't self proclaimed now. I haven't said that was me. <laughs> I, I, don't worry. This <laughs> is not, none easy, of that's you know, coming from uh... Ryan. None of that is coming from <laughs> Ryan, honestly. Um, I think, you know, um, like you mentioned, like Blair and Adam Hastings, they're good to have around them. Um, they can they have their moments being a bit different, but it's good crack. Um, and no, it's a, it's a sort of different team. Like we're, we're kind of just now. There's a few boys from Edinburgh and Glasgow, and, and the exiles who have come into the squad who haven't got many caps. So I think there's a sort of different environment in the, the squad just now, which is is good. Um, but yeah, well, Wilson obviously was was one of the the guys that always been in the team room having a laugh, having a joke, albeit his jokes aren't that funny. But um, you'd try anyway. But I think it's it's just slightly different. I mean. Um, but not, not in a bad way not in a good way it's not, I don't think it's got any better in terms of that sort of side of it it's just a similar sort of rugby a rugby team kind of banter and atmosphere which is good Did you boys have a beer after the game? Yeah we had a few um, obviously it was a, a, a quick turnaround so we didn't go too well just back to the hotel and chilled out had a few in the hotel and that was it so we had meetings on Monday and recovery Monday morning and stuff so um, yeah oh, okay. Save, saving it for the Japan game <laughs> Uh, well, hopefully you have a uh, we have you'll be able to celebrate a big one against uh, Japan. Who a quick one and who can handle their booze the best in uh, out of the boys? Um, Ollie Cable, um, he he can handle it pretty well. I think Jimmy Batty um, gave himself the name of Iron Gut I mean, a few years back, and then thirty minutes after he given himself that name, he was sick. So <laughs> I have to put a question mark over that. And that was at Stirling County. Oh, I don't know. Like I said. I was, Quite a few new boys in the team, and the last couple of years it's been COVID, so we've not really had a had a night out, obviously. So, Kevin um, can put some wine away, though, eh? Yeah, yeah, he can give that a good go. Jesus. So, pre COVID, what's the best night out you've ever had after a victory with the Scottish boys? I don't know, a lot of them. Um, <laughs> maybe when, maybe 2018 when we won, we won a couple of cup, we went to a bar and went straight out after it. And I think up here in Scotland after games, um. The city's packed and it's usually like a good, um, good atmosphere, so it's always quite good going, going out to a few bars and stuff after, after the games up here in Scotland. So yeah, I, I like that. I've not. I'm trying to think of anywhere else I've been and been out. Was um, that the one with with um, Greg with his tie around his head? Yeah, yeah, that was that one. That was a good, good night. Tie <laughs> his head when he ripped his buttons open. So <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, someone leaked that far. I think. Up. I think no, it's Emma, my girlfriend, put, put, the, um, put the video up, and the next morning she was like. Oh no, I feel so bad. Dude's gonna, Dude's gonna hate me, and, and I was like, I oh, don't worry about it. It's fine. We won. Uh, you're up against the world champion South Africa at the weekend. How, how are the boys feeling in the build-up? Are you, you guys confident that you can get the job done? Yeah, because we had a good, good one at the weekend, but um, again, it'll be different. So I think we're, we're, we're confident in ourselves and how we're going to go and play this game, um, which is which should be a good fun style of rugby and and get the boys into the game. Uh, but at the same time, it's going to be so tough. We're going to have to take our chances whenever they give it and um, you know we might only get two or three chances in the game to score a try um, so forget that we need to make sure we take it and I think defensively and in the aerial battle we have to be, have to be on, on top of our game so um, it'll be tough but we're, we're confident you got a few boys that are going to be able to decipher their Afrikaans calls aren't you haven't you <laughs> yeah we will do yeah, yeah. a couple of boys who can, who can do that for us <laughs> hey, what, if if we get that, a, 
What's his <laughs> well, name? What's he saying? Well, we've had AB, obviously, he's a new attack coach here and he's South African and so he knows quite a few of these boys and um, obviously in, in was it the, the rugby chat at URC, they, they play against good South African teams now so we've got a better understanding obviously having a few South African boys in camp. They know the players as individuals so we can uh, we can get a bit of an insight into their, their, their team. Plus, you nearly tore them a new one that last Lions test so... They'll be panicking, mate. They'll be panicking. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to get them strapped up, maybe. So I've got a few <laughs> shots coming in there. But yeah, we love it. <laughs> With that in mind, Finn, obviously, sadly, an injury keeping you out of selection for most of the Lions tour until that final test where you were amazing. How frustrating was the general feeling in camp that you guys weren't playing attacking rugby and perhaps falling into the Springboks trap? Like you say, I was injured, so I didn't really get too frustrated about it as I wasn't playing. Um, and then I think that you know the third test week we were we we're saying we were going to play more and run it around a little bit more, um, which I'd felt was was the way to, to try and take them on. Um, uh, so yeah, but I think you know Gats he's he's got his sort of game plan, his strategy, which has obviously worked for him and um, you know for many years. One chat, you know, he's won a lot of titles and stuff. So I think that was we went in to try and take out their their kicking game through our kicking game. Um, however, in the third test we went in with a slightly different mindset to, to try and play and run it run it against them. So. That's going to help us this week, and we'll actually have trust in, in that when they would play the ball against them, looking for offloads and looking to take them on from deep. I mean, in hindsight, do you think you guys should have played more attacking rugby? Uh, for me, yeah, yeah. But that's how I like to play. That's what I like to do, and um, I think as well, you've got to go kind of personnel, um, whether it's the, the the forwards or backs and, and or whatever it is. You know, for me, I, I think that we could have played a little bit more attacking, but extra like, gats. He's, he's a great head coach, and, and he knows the boys better than I do, and. You can actually use potentially what's best. Um, so yeah, uh, I think it's tough. The uh, tough needs to say we should have played more because that's how I like to play. So um, it's different for every individual, and then the coach got to decide the, the game plan on, on who he's picking. Mate, if Finn had the choice of choosing the game plan, that's what I want to do. Chuck it, if you chuck it about, <laughs> couple of crossfields, easy as that. Oh, right? I said that to Ali something actually just chuck it to me as fast as you can and I'll do the rest just give me the ball and I'll do something with it <laughs> give me the ball we'll win uh, just give me the ball and I'll do something a quick quick word we just um, close the leap on on the Lions we've had a few of the guys already on the show uh, who are on tour with you as well but for, for you who is uh, who is the best person you met on, on that on that tour for the social side obviously um Who's got on well? I got on well with actually them um, with Jamie, uh, yeah, Jamie George, Johnny Hill, quite a few English boys got on really well with them. Um, you know, Johnny Hill and Jimmy George went in the test squads. Um, I knew there was after injury, so we had a, a good few rounds of golf and stuff. Um, so yeah, I got on with them really well. Uh, I knew Marcus a little bit before it. Um, and get on well with him. But to be honest, most of the boys were were good guys, which um, which helped a lot. Like I say, I wasn't playing for for maybe two or three weeks, so I had a few socials with, with everyone, which was nice. Leading the charge. You, men- you mentioned Marcus Smith. A quick word on him and Owen Farrell. If you were Eddie Jones, how do you think they'd go together? Would you play them together or would you be tempted to play Smith, Tuilagi and Slade? I'd be tempted to play them both together. Um, I think nowadays with the, the 50-22 rule, um, if you've got two kick- or two playmakers and kickers at 10-12 and then obviously Slade at 13 left-footed, that's a, a, a lot of threats they've got there. Um, if they want to, to actually play the ball and if they want to have a crack from deep, then... The, the opposition's always going to have to keep boys back there the whole time. So there's going to be a space on the edges. And with Slade at, th- at 13, he can go round boys or put the kicks through. Um, it just depends if they want to have two Lange at 12 to have a little bit more power if they need to. Um, as well, obviously, Marks, if he comes off the bench, he's, you know, he can add that sort of X factor and can change the game. So it depends. I'd imagine it depends who they're playing and, and how they want to go. Um, if they want to go, go strong on the bench and bring Marcus off to try and change the game up if they need to. Um, you know, because if he came on and Faz are still at twelve, then he can still play that that kicking territorial game if they need to with two or three kickers there. So uh, it could change week to week and, and depend on the game plan they've got. Is that Marcus Smith pretty sure of himself, Finn? Is he like you know going into game? Because that's one thing I spoke about. I said to the boys like I would worry playing him with Owen Farrell. The stuff that I heard about Owen Farrell telling people not to do this, don't do that. The way he's pretty overbearing on some guys. What that Marcus Smith? hold himself enough to be like no 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 same as you would I'm doing this mate uh, yeah I don't, I don't know um, 
you know, he's obviously been a bit, been a harlequin, and he's at the heart of everything. Just he's he's given that freedom to play what he wants to do, and he controls the team. Um, so like you're saying if there's maybe him and Faz at ten and twelve, it could be a bit, a bit of a clash. That yeah. if something goes wrong, it could be Faz can having a goal, so he needs to kick that one, and then vice versa. That if he kicks something, it could be on to go. But I, I don't know what Marcus is like when he's in in the England environment. Obviously, um, he was there in the Lions, but he uh, he, he didn't get involved in the test stuff. But um, so it's, it's slightly different how how he's potentially coming across there. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure how it would be. It could be they could clash or they could work really well together. I'm not sure. Have you ever had, thinking back, all three of you in your career of two two characters who clash but play very well together, but clearly are just not friends remotely, but somehow it works on the pitch? I think myself and Greg would have been probably different different players and different our personalities on the, on the game would, would have been very different when I first came in. Um, he'd have been a lot more kind of serious and focused in his own way. Mm-hmm. Uh, in comparison to me, he was a lot very chilled out, having a bit of fun in the pitch, kind of smiling, sort of having jokes. Um, but I think when I, well, I think I think when I came in to, to, to then play with Greg, he almost then I almost rubbed a little bit off on him in terms of that relaxed kind of just go with the flow sort of um, style. Albeit he would have his moments when he'd have a go at me, and we kind of got on really. We, we probably hit, we probably kind of uh, what do I say? Um, enhanced each other like me being very relaxed and him being kind of more more talkative and kind of being strict on the boys it probably worked quite well between us you could say something different Wilson you might completely disagree with that but no 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 I do I know I agree with that I'm definitely and like yeah everything around it I suppose yeah Greg was very serious when he before the games and stuff whereas you're but I think that's a lot you know you see that in a lot of camps don't you but you're probably on the other end of the spectrum in terms of how relaxed you are what, what is it a club sandwich before every game you still do it. Everyone's, have, uh... in, everyone's in the team room eating like the manky spaghetti bolognese at like eleven o'clock, and Finn's like, he's got the waiter on his finger, like, "Cup sandwich, please, and chips and a can of coke." And you're like, what? A well, for, for, a, for, a, for the for the Lions, I was going club sandwiches. Um, at the weekend, I just had two slices of toast with some beans, and that was it. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it just depends what I fancy. I think before we play, we played uh, to lose last Sunday. It was nine o'clock and I just had a five guys at like two o'clock and that was me for the game. So that's it kind of depends on our fuel. You'd be a nutritionist nightmare the way you just you've just said that and there'll be kids all over the world going, Yeah, but Finn Russell has a five guys before a game. Yeah. I, yeah, I think for me, like you I don't know, you eat but you, you eat healthier and you eat what you need to during the week. So then when it comes to the game day, it's well for me anyway, it's all about just feeling good and I don't really like eating that much before a game. Um so I'll tend just to eat whatever I fancy. Let's run it back to the, uh, just finish off with that line. So you obviously went then after that on a couple of glorious holidays to unwind. Ryan, continuously slating your dress sense and the amount of, uh, that you splash on items of clothing, flip-flops and, and the likes. When you look at all of your purchases, what would you say is your most expensive and also the one you regret the most? Uh, my most expensive would be a watch that I bought when I got back from the Lions. Um, so it's not clothing, but it's a watch. Um, it's an investment. Yeah, what's exactly. Sort of, exactly. <laughs> what's sort of, obviously, we will disclaim and say it's locked in a safe, guarded by robots in Paris. But uh, what what sort what sort of thing did you go for? Oh, it's a Patek Philippe, one of the notchless ones. Um, so I just one of the jewelers up in Edinburgh, sort of made out of lying jewelers. So um, I went into Paris and asked them and. They said it's a few years waiting list, so he managed to sort out in, in a few months, which was, was nice of him. There's been a couple of things that I've bought, and then I bought, I bought actually a Tom Ford, a Tom Ford, a Tom Brown um, tracksuit, and then put it in the wash and the dry, and it shrunk, so I gave it to my brother. <laughs> um, 